Is my swimming pool safe? Well, let's talk about a couple of ways that your swimming pool might not be safe or some common things that you encounter when working in the field, working around swimming pools professionally. And I guess the low hanging fruit we'll take here will be electrical violations that relate to uh, electrical code and just, you know, safety things, uh, things which have become deficient or failed over time, which fail to get repaired properly. Let's talk specifically. So the connections to your pump and your pool heater and any electrically powered devices uh, or peripheral devices like automation panels or salt water chlorine generation cell um, systems, all of these will have uh, an electrical line that feeds them. That line, for most places I'm pretty sure, should be wet rated, which is to say that it's in a conduit or a rubber protected tech cable or something to this degree. And this includes uh, wet connects for the L16 connectors or box connectors. And all of that stuff's super expensive compared to the regular residential or light duty indoor commercial grade stuff like Romex or Lumex wire, which is that white uh, wire that you find inside of most houses. Not the right stuff for outdoors on a uh, swimming pool equipment pad for sure, and neither is BX armored cable. Again, uh, you know, you're getting closer here that it's an armored cable, but that's not suitable for wet areas or wet applications. And a swimming pool equipment pad, you bet your butt, is a wet application because even if it's not outdoors, the pool and the filter itself are expected to have water coming out of them for certain maintenance applications. So the area should be designed for, for uh, wet or damp uh, applications and that very specifically should include your electrical so you know conduits or tech cable with wet connects all of the stuff which I mean you shouldn't know this stuff you should ask an electrician and a qualified local electrician should bring your electrical equipment up to the current code to make sure that it's safe and make sure that you're not going to have any un, you know any problems with your uh, pool being unsafe as a result of these electrical deficiencies. It's something that you've probably seen a lot. You know, you might have a bunch of them, but you might not know that it's a problem or it should be looked at. Contact a local electrician, have your pool pad inspected for electrical deficiencies. Moving on, the next thing I would say that could potentially make your swimming pool unsafe in the average swimming pool would be a chemical imbalance or, you know, improper chemical management of the water. It's a finer line between safe and not safe for green putrid water and crystal clear, perfectly beautiful swimming water. The line between those things is closer than most swimming pool owners realize and mismanagement of your chemicals or choosing the wrong chemical protocols or the failure to just even, you know, do the bare minimum in terms of testing and maintenance of your water chemistry these can so easily result in a potentially dangerous situation and it's very easy to take it for granted because it's a swimming pool you're complacent you've had it for a while there's never been a problem what am i going to get swimmer's ear like yeah you could get swimmer's ear or something like that or you can get something so much worse like brain eating parasites or things that like flesh eating bacteria that causes you to lose all of your limbs within 72 hours in contact with the water or even airborne things like legionnaires disease where you don't even have to be in the water for it to be a serious health concern. When you talk about things like alternative sanitizers, that's a hot topic these days. It's like, what can I use that's not chlorine? Chlorine's bad for me, so what else can I use? And these pool owners end up choosing something that's an alternative to chlorine, which may even potentially have, you know, the, the potential to keep them safe, but Maybe not. Maybe they bought some snake oil or something that only kind of works or something that has some pretty serious holes in it from a, you know, a technical perspective in terms of how it's not really protecting you in the way that you think. And you bet water is a dangerous thing, especially stagnant water, which is what we're talking about with the swim swimming pool. That's why we use chemical sanitizers to make sure that the water is safe for swimmers. So again, that line between safe and dangerous is probably a little closer than most pool owners think. When you work in the industry professionally, especially nationally, you see that there you know, are quite a few instances where people do get sick, sometimes die, 
I mean, it's just not, it's not something to play around with. You want to have a healthy respect for this body of stagnant water that you have in your backyard that you and your kids like to go swimming in. And as much as it might seem like a good idea to avoid nasty things like chemicals, I agree with that statement. It sounds like a good thing. People smarter than you, people smarter than I, they came up with the idea that using this chlorine is the is the lesser of two evils. It will keep you safe, learn how to use it properly, and you can get by using the minimum amount without leaving the door wide open for something potentially pretty bad to happen. So let's move along and talk about what else could make your swimming pool not safe. This one's a big one. This is the reason why I made this video, really. I work consulting with pool owners. That's kind of like my day-to-day -day business is people email me questions about their pools, whether a small fix or a big renovation, or maybe they're planning to build a pool. But I'm talking about existing pools here specifically where you have a main drain. You should have two main drains in the bottom. If you have one main drain on the bottom right away, this is a red flag, I'm worried. That main drain poses a very serious risk for entrapment hazard. Now, yes, there is a way in which you can build swimming pools with main drains where the main drains are not dangerous and they're not going to kill you or drown you or anything like that. But there is also a way in which you can build a swimming pool that all of that stuff will happen. And there is a very high risk for danger from an improperly installed, improperly maintained, or improperly operated active main drain in the bottom of a swimming pool. First of all, any modern swimming pool that has an active main drain, and that means a main drain that water actually draws through that main drain. There are some where water doesn't actively draw. There is no direct connection to a pump that is sucking water through the straw, so to speak. The ones where there is water being sucked through the straw or through the, the suction lines, those ones need to have dual main drains, 36 inches apart, hydraulically balanced, unblockable VGBA approved covers. This is actually a whole bunch of stuff that those covers need. And if that sounds like news to you, again, red flag, I'm really worried here. This isn't a tiny little, oh yeah, that could be a problem and one in a million times. This is a huge dangerous problem. And like, if you were to ask me, oh, can I keep going swimming until I get this fixed? Absolutely not. This pool, is closed. If you have a single suction main drain in the deep end of your pool that actively has water drawing from your pump, that's a problem. That shouldn't exist like that to uh, you know in a modern swimming pool. And it's something that's supposed to get deleted or remediated during the pool renovation process. And that's definitely what you have to do. You have to renovate that during your next pool renovation. And until that time, like, obviously, you can't just stop using the pool. That's not realistic. So one of the things you should look at is adding a VAC alert SVRS device. Now, this is something that it's a vacuum safety release. It notices a sudden spike in the vacuum pressure, uh, indicating something is blocking this line that's that the pump is sucking through. And it'll just open the line to air so that you, you don't have somebody who is actively stuck on the main drain. This is an acceptable workaround for a single suction main drain. As far as I understand, everywhere it's it's considered acceptable. You can buy it as a standalone device that you can install, or you can buy a variable speed pool pump that has this SVRS device installed in it. And I absolutely recommend you do that if you have an active main drain in your pool and there's only one of them and still go go ahead and renovate that in the future the next time you have a major renovation of your pool done you need to have the the main drains renovated you need to have them dual installed you should have even the pipe size double checked and make sure your flow rates aren't exceeding vgba uh, recommendations like no more than six feet per second of water velocity and any section line in the pool is actually a ton of engineering that goes into the safety of swimming pools but not all of it has been applied to a swimming pool that was installed 20, 30, or 40 years ago, which perhaps now you own and you don't know any of the history about the pool and you don't really know any of these technical details, but the onus of responsibility is still on your shoulders. It's still your swimming pool. It's still your safety and your family. So you have to protect yourself, protect your interests, become informed, watch YouTube videos like this and learn about important safety considerations that you might not have thought of before. If you found this information helpful, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. 
and you can check out my website, swimmingpoolsteve.com.